guys, Pro here at VIP Outdoors, and today we are making a blacktail backstrap roast. So what we did, if you take a look at this, we actually took three sections of backstrap. If you take a backstrap, it's about three times as long as this. And when I vacuum pack it, I cut it in three sections. Then what I did is I took some old Quebec, put it on this drying rack, the back straps, and sprinkled it with old Quebec. And I let it dry brine in the fridge for about 24 hours. And if you look, you see the amount of moisture that's released from that roast? All of that is moisture that you don't want in there. One of the challenging things with backstrap is very similar to beef tenderloin. It's a great cut of meat and then it's very, very tender, but there's not a lot of natural flavor to it. So tenderloin like beef, very good cut, but you can't compare it to say a ribeye that has a lot of fat in it. And that's the same with the backstrap on a any deer, any venison, any anything. Okay? So we have that, we dry, dry brined it with old Quebec. Now here's what we're gonna do, is we are going to take a little bit uh, better than bouillon, which is just, this is the vegetable base. And we're just gonna spread it, just a light thin layer on that backstrap. Again, the backstrap doesn't have a lot of flavor, so we wanna introduce flavor to it, but we also don't wanna take away from the backstrap itself. So we're gonna put just enough on there to coat the outside. And then I'm going to take this blend I made, which is a very simple blend of olive oil, parsley, and roast and garlic, just garlic cloves. I got one had a parsley in there. I have 15 cloves of garlic and olive oil till you get this consistency. Put it in the food processor, a little bit of salt, pepper, and away you go. Again, super thin layer on there. I'll show you why. All we're going to do is just get enough on the outside to help coat because what we're ultimately gonna do is a reverse sear. And for those of you who are new to a reverse sear, don't let it intimidate you. It's very, very easy. And using a pellet grill is a very easy way to start your reverse sear. Get all the sides here. Simply going to place that right in the middle. I have my pellet grill set at, set at 225. That's 225 degrees. I would take my meat probe and I'm going to ram it right into the middle. Now, one thing I think I forgot to mention: these three back straps, I've taken cooking twine. And I bundle them all together and that gives you that nice thick roast because of a deer backstrap by itself is not very big at all. So this gives you a nice big chunk. Notice this part, it's a little drier. Take some of that olive oil and coat it. Now with this grill at 225, what I'm gonna look for is internal temperature of that roast. I'm gonna close it. As soon as that gets up to 90 degrees on the meat temperature, which right now, that food temperature is 62 degrees. I brought it up to room temperature inside before I put it on the grill. I'm gonna wait for that to get to 90 degrees. I'm gonna rotate it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat up a hot cast iron pan and we're gonna sear the outside to get that nice crust. Add a little bit more of the garlic parsley blend that we have. And it's gonna make an absolutely phenomenal roast. So stay tuned guys. So guys we're continuing with our reverse here and essentially all the reverse here is is we're trying to bring the internal temperature of the meat or your protein whatever you're cooking up to the desired temperature so for me I like medium so I'm gonna go for about 130 right so again I have that probe in my backstrap roast and right now it's reading 95 degrees internal temperature on the food my overall pellet grills at 225 so you can see it change color just a hair. 
what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rotate it because even though all pellet grills are indirect heat, you're still going to have the heat coming up off the bottom. Uh, you can put tin foil on there, I suppose, and, and eliminate that a little bit, but I'm going to hit it with our parsley garlic spread again. I'm going to take that probe out. I'm going to get this rotated. See that? You can tell it's the bottom is just a little warmer. So I want to flip that meat over. Some of that on there. Okay. Now I'm going to put that probe right back in there. And I'm going to remove it when that roast gets to 130. So we'll shut her back down, do her again. All right, so we brought that internal temperature of the roast up to 133, which is gonna be about medium, medium rare. Here's what it looks like. It actually looks pretty good on its own, but we still wanna get a little bit more of a crust. Let's take that off, bring it over to the rack real quick, and let's go over to our cast iron pan now. Now, if you notice, we got this cast iron pan nice and hot. And what I did is I took a piece of bone marrow, just this is just regular beef bone marrow, and put that in the pan, and all this fat came out of there. And that's gonna help give us just another layer of flavor. So, I put one more coating on here. Like that, turn it. Smells great. And again, these back straps on venison, all your game, they're gonna be really lean. So it's tough to, um, you almost can't put too much fat in them just because they are so lean. And they're very mild in flavor. So adding that garlic and the parsley is gonna go a long ways. All right, here's the fun part. I'll give it a nice sear. Again, I got this pan just smoking hot. I have it on high heat right now. And you're only gonna give it so long on each side. That roll. This is that nice crust on the outside of any rib roast that we all like. Uh, so it's garlicky, salty, seasoned well, but it also gives you that texture that we're all looking for. What's nice about that reverse here is that we know that internal temperature is not gonna move away from that 133, 135 degrees that, we, that we're looking for. So we have a nice, perfect, medium to medium rare loin with a nice crust on the outside. And just keep on turning it. One more. Probably could have used a little bigger pan, but what are you gonna do? Just like that. Okay. The ticket right now is you gotta let that rest. Absolutely have to let that rest. While it's hot, I'm gonna hit it with parsley and garlic one more time. Let it rest for about, oh, I'd say at least 10 to 15 minutes. Again, super lean meat, so it won't take long at all. We're gonna thin slice this and serve it just like that. That's how one of the ways that we make our backstrap here at VIP Outdoors. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you on the next go around.